Hello everyone, yeah, it's me and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be looking at something again that is very, very important. But before I move on, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I've been working in the UK as a special biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So yeah, let's get into it. Now, I had already, you know, made a video about um, the full block count analyzer and the reagent their functional principle or their working principle then also make a video about the um, sp10 which is the one that make the stain they make the film stain it then i've also talked about the tube sorter the last one i'm going to be talking about which is also you know remember we're talking about sismes xl line so i said about that with the sismes xl line it comprises in the line itself the, from the line you can load sample from the line then under it with the line you also have full block count analyzer then you have uh, the analyzer that make the blood film, then you have a analyzer that will sort out the samples whether it has finished or is it unknown like I've said already on the previous video so you can watch that then after that you also have another analyzer which is the last one which is for the ESR and it is called interliner okay now this video now is about the interliner so just to make sure that I recap the six mesh XL line because I want you guys to understand when you say six mesh XL line what do they mean so six mesh XL line it's not just one analyzer so you need to that's why it's very very important that you know what you are saying so sysmes xl line is a line okay so in that line you have full block count analyzer which may be something like sysmes xl 9000 or 9001 so if you are referring for full block count analyzer you should actually be saying sysmes xl 9000 or 9001 or whatever depending on the code then if you see something if you are referring just on uh, making film you should be looking at sp10 then if you're looking at tube sorter, you should be looking at tube. But if you say Sysmes XL line, you're looking at the full block count analyzer, the SP10, the tube sorter, and the interliner, which is for the ESR. Anyway, so let's finish up the line by talking about the ESR. Of course, you already know what ESR means. It means erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Okay? Happiness. Now, now that you know that, so why do you actually do ESR? One of the things that ESR is actually a biomarker, you know, for inflammation. So remember, once that stand, so if the cell sediment fastly, yeah, it's an indication there's an inflammation. But of course, you know, ESR is not really something that you can really trust because there's a lot of factor that can affect it. But that's by the way, that's not what I'm talking about today. What I really want to focus on is what reagent does interliner use, which is the ESR analyzer. So you're going to there's a lot of reagent that it uses. Number one. You have diluent, start diluent, okay? Number two, you have start saline. Number three, you have start disinfectant. Number four, now you have start green solution. Number five, you have start cleaning agent. Then you have deionized water. With the deionized water, you just need to get it from the lab, okay? So it's not like there's a specialized from the systems, no. Now that you've known the reagent that they contain, the next thing that what are the functions of this reagent? How did they function? What's the function of saline? What's the function of disinfectant? What's the function of all of them? Like we've mentioned, what are their functions? So that's the next one we're going to look at, okay? So um, let's start off with something like um, the saline, the start saline. So I'm just gonna, be, all of them, they are start, like interliner start, uh, whatever. But so I'm just gonna be calling the key name. So the saline, when you talk about the saline, what does the saline do? For the automatic cleaning of the fuel nozzle, okay? Green solution on its own because the tube, this interliner, the tube it used, you know, when it aspirates blood, it aspirates into a tube. That tube is called Western Green Tube. So, in that Western Green Tube, so what then happened with the rain solution? What it does that it automatically kind of rains the, the, the tube. You know, once it once blood is aspirated into the tube, after the processing, then with the rain solution, it can then automatically clean, it kind of flush the blood out. Then you have start dilute. So what the start dilute does that it will kind of automatically dilute the blood samples. Now in the interliner, there's a waste. Okay, it has a waste. So that is what then what the disinfectant, the star disinfectant does is to kind of um, help in the cleaning of the waste. So it helps in the cleaning and disinfecting of the waste. So, so because you know the saline kind of automatically clean the fuel nozzle, but then there's something else that deionize uh, water do. Okay, so with the deionized water, what it does that every aspiration from the fuel nozzle is then flush, meaning that deionized water helps to flush the fuel nozzle 
at every time there's an aspiration of the blood. Okay, so I want you to know the difference with the deep ionized water. Every time there's a blood aspirating, which of course that has to, to go through with the fillers as well. So once there's that aspiration, then the deionized water will help to flush that out to kind of maintain you know cleaning. But then with the, the star saline, what it does that it automatically clean the fuel nozzle. Now, because the western grain, you know. The sample aspirates and it goes into the western grain. Remember that blood itself contains protein, so th there's going to be some protein content maybe left in that very tube. So those protein content can then be removed with the help of cleaning agent. The cleaning agent helps to remove any form of protein content, okay, you know, that may be seen in the western grain pipette. Remember that I've said that the pipette for the ESR is called western grain pipette or two, okay. So how does let's look at the process so the sample has now moved it has now come to the interliner it will scan the barcode so once it scanned the barcode you know after scanning the barcode then it will now go of course it also do its mixing to make sure that it's properly mixed then each of these very western green pipettes have then aspirate and fuel according to the level that is required so it will fill it up to the level required level okay and that too, what's the way it fills it? It fills it and cover it like if it's so it's a covered area. There's no any exposure for any form of contamination. So what then happened is this: because the interliner uses, you know, the, with the EDTA sample is closed. So what it go, it go to pierce it and then take it, take sample. So that close, you know, making sure that the samples are closed is just to avoid any form of contamination. So the first thing, the tube is filled at correct level. Then um, it also makes sure that it uses the EDTA sample that is closed. And the idea of the closing is so that it will avoid any form of contamination. So the interliner will then, the, the needle will then pierce it and then aspirate any, the required amount of the blood needed. And again, that just to make sure that there's any contamination. Okay. And then, you know, like I've said, so it will read the barcode. Once you read the barcode, it kind of has a memory of knowing, okay, this is this patient and this is what it requires. It requires ESR. Of course, remember that if you scan it and it's not ESR, it, that, it, that sample is not booking for ESR. It's not going to do anything about it. So for it to do everything, anything about it, it has been, so you don't really need the paperwork to report it because the result will just go to the, it's collected. So it has its own system, okay, and memory where it can store the result. And once it finishes up running the sample and store the result and that result then will then be transferred you know um, to the uh, laboratory information management system so there's a link between the laboratory information management system and that of the uh, interliner so as a result is coming from there it's going straight to the uh, laboratory information management system of the lab the same thing of course is applicable with the full block count so following the aspiration what the good thing about interliner is that once the blood has been aspirated okay then it goes through of course before i forget to say it, it can give you the result within 30 minutes uh, in about 30 minutes okay it doesn't have to wait for one hour like other analyzer so what is going to happen there once it's aspirated as soon as it's aspirated then go through as soon as it read the result okay we're, we're, we're going to come to that as soon as the result is read it automatically the tube is washed off like we said don't forget that it will wash off and follow the washing of the very tube okay then and of course making sure that any protein all the protein you know content has also been removed like we've said before so following that then it will also allow the tube to be dry it helps also you know the tube will then dry before you know being used again for another aspiration of another blood okay so meaning that the tube are automatically washed okay following uh, as soon as the sample uh, reading has completed now the next thing is that when it comes to the um the amount of the sample that is required in the interliner you are looking at 1.4 mil okay i know that this might be much but yeah this is the kind of thing that i really want you guys to have an idea so you're looking at 1.4 mil of the whole blood so that is what is required to be able to fill the tube to the correct level okay of course with the interliner it can load the sample automatically so when the sample comes in it scan the barcode then mix it automatically okay then aspirate it stretch in any point and it knows the position where it is okay linking with each of the patient so that is how it works let not let us now go straight to the principle of interliner so far what i've tried to communicate is to let you guys know the reagent that is involved in the uh, ESR uh, processing which is a analyzer which is a interliner okay and i've tried to say that interliner is one of the excel line okay now i'm trying to i've now given you the uh, all the reagent that interliner uses and their function then i try to give you overview how that analyzer run although there are a few things that could, that can also be added but this is just generally 
how you know it's kind of barcode you know uh, take the sample pierce the tube why the tube why the sample tube want it to be closed to avoid contamination how follow the aspiration it to take it to the certain level that is correct and we're looking at 1.4 mil to be able to get the actual level so these are the things that we've said so far so so far i just want you to know about the the interliner being used for uh, uh, esr then also know the the reagent that they use and the function of the reagent now let us look at the principal function of the analyzer itself how does he read the result Okay? How does he know that the ESR is this or that as the case may be? Okay? That's the working principle of the um, this analyzer. What to, one of the things you need to know, that I've just put it into three headings. Number one, it uses a sensor to be able to read the result. Okay? And that sensor is called optical sensor. So it uses that optical sensor to be able to read through that very western grid uh, pipette or tube. So once the optical sensor is going through the tube, it takes reading at every 0.25 millimeter. Remember that because the blood is aspirated, so what you want is how far has it sedimented. So as it's doing that, it's taking readings. So you know that would then determine the value that it's going to give in the end. Okay. But anyway, with the Western Green pipette, what what I want you to know first is that with the Western Green pipette, as the sample has you know has been aspirated into it, what then happened is that for the for it to be able to read the result of that ESR, it's going to use optical sensor, and in using that optical sensor, if that optical sensor will be moving along the uh, the tube. Okay. As it's moving along the tube, what then happened that at every 0.25 millimeter, it will be taking some readings. Okay. Now, as it's taking that reading, what is want to measure is the infrared absorber so once the cell sediment where does the sedimentation stop so then and the plasma that you're seeing up there so that would not give a kind of infrared absorber so that infrared absorber is what that is going to take as a measurement so as it's moving across it you know is that infrared absorber that is going to take at the appropriate time okay which is 30 minutes i've told you it, it, it can give you a result in 30 minutes okay but it will be taking reading at every 0.25 millimeter you know at the end is going to measure the absorbance of the infrared light so if i to summarize this what i can tell you is that so when it comes to the working principle the Western Green pipette is filled with the, with the blood, following the filling of the of, of the blood. So it uses the optical sensor to be able to read, give you the reading of the ESR. So what it's going to do then is that this optical sensor will be moving through this very uh, Western Green uh, pipette. As it's moving that, it's taking reading at every 0.25 millimeter. Okay, so it will be taking that very reading. Now remember that the cells are sedimented as far as it can. Okay, then what is then going to do that that optical sensor will then measure the absorbance of the infrared okay western grey and um, pipette or tube that is filled with the whole blood once again remember that the esr now is part of the xn line tube sutter is part of the xn line and sp10 which is with slide maker is part of the xn line and of course the full block count analyzer is also part of the xn line but now when you look at them individually i've already told you about the full block count analyzer so you should be calling it sysmes xn you can give the code maybe 9000 or 9010 and so on then when you want to you can say sysmes uh, sp10 that should be for S4 making slide, making just a film, blood film slide, okay? Or then you can say Sysmet Tube Softer, TS500 as the case may be. So that is for that. Or you can say Sysmet Interliner. So when you, when you put it differently like this, you should call them their specific name with their specific code. But if you want to refer to all of them together, you can call it Sysmet XN Line. I hope that is that is clear now. Once again, thank you so much for uh, listening and I hope you enjoyed the video. Do let me know what you think about the video by putting a comment in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe. And if you do have any questions, please put it down and I'm more than happy to go through it with you. Thank you so much till I come back away again. Bye-bye.